It's a bird. It's a man. It's a lovely girl. It's Florida, land of strand of mysterious Everglades. And land of tropical sunsets that provide golden halos for a colonnade of shrimp boats masts. Land of clear blue mornings where the seabirds glide silently overhead on a whisper smooth offshore breeze. Land of nature's magic where porpoises are fed by hand and young pelicans dig deep into that famous beak that holds food enough for a week. Florida, where you get school credit for learning to water ski. Since 1513, when Florida's first tourist, Ponce de Leon, dropped some gossip about the fountain of youth, countless other tourists have been searching for it. Uh, youth, that is. Although papaya juice may not brighten the eye and quicken the step for all time, it is good and good for you. Small wonder that so many ex-tourists now live the year round in very permanent looking wigwams and continue the search for youth from truly gracious surroundings. Florida is so many things, few of us really get to know her. She is, for instance, an agricultural career girl well on her way to blooming, booming success. Crisp green salads by the acre not only help make Florida a healthful place to live, but form an important bulwark to her ever-expanding economy. These salads are for the northern winter market. Much of Florida is lavishly lush and fertile. Sugar cane grows higher than an elephant's eye and modern harvesting devices and the famous sunshine are combining to build the sugarcane industry into big business. The whole Everglades region of Florida is topped with 10 feet or more of rich, rich topsoil called muckland. The catch is, much of the topsoil is topped with water. So huge drainage ditches are cut across the Florida Everglades, reclaiming thousands of acres of fertile muckland at a time. Once reclaimed, this land is so lush and fertile that, as the saying goes, you plant, then stand back out of the way. Grasses originally imported from India help reclaim the land. It's grass with a will to live, something like that crabgrass that gives you trouble in your front lawn. Here's an odd system of planting. Roots and tops and all are spread over the reclaimed land. Rollers merely push the green grass close to the earth, and nature does the rest. Roots spring out, searching for the fertile soil at the nodes, the joints of the grass, and soon one stalk becomes many. In three to six months, zoom, there's a cattle boom. More cattle, more tons of luscious beefsteak to the acre than mighty Texas ever managed. Fine new breeds and crossbreeds of cattle grazing and growing on the man-made pampas that a few short years ago was swamp. That's lusty, up-and-coming young Miss Florida. She's good to know, and she's the backbone of Florida's newfound prosperity. On the other hand, there's the dignified Dowager Princess Florida. You'll meet her when you visit the state capital in Tallahassee the only Dixie capital the Yanks failed to capture in the war between the states. This Miss Florida is a bit austere and loaded with tradition. You meet her when you visit St. Augustine and knock on the door of the oldest house in America. Enter and stroll through the centuries old but still lovely gardens. Since the 16th century, 14 families have lived here and each altered and enlarged the structure. The oldest house is a living part of history where visitors can search and find marks of American progress. 
You are with the austere Lady Florida when you wander through the moldering ruins of old forts. This one, Castillo de San Marcos, was designed by a French architect, but at various times, both the English and the Spanish manned the gun ports. If you happen to be a small boy, here's the place to fire up your imagination and look out to sea and fire an ancient five-pounder at an imaginary pirate. But of all the Floridas there are, the warm mother Florida is perhaps best to know. She's a seabird, a roseate tern, sheltering her baby from the sun and clucking sounds of cheer for a newcomer to a strange, bright world. These are called sooty terns. Why do you suppose they are called terns? This fellow looks like a diplomat, all decked out in white tie and tails. Do you suppose it's because Mama and Papa turn, take turns guarding and warming and turning the single egg each pair hatches? No, 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 it's because these birds belong to the subfamily Sternai. Why, who are you? I'm a naturalist. A naturalist? Oh, what do you do? Well, I visit the bird sanctuaries, sort of watch over wildlife, and count the birds. And if they Count they're... them? Why, you must be a very busy man. These are naughty turns. A certain Mr. Audubon who knew a great deal about birds, said that these were called naughty because they used to land on the yard arms of old sailing vessels and sleep there during the night, naughty. Another naturalist named Watson says they're called naughty because they nod or bow as part of the courtship ceremony. Uh, oh, what's this ceremony? Quiet, shh. Is this, is this a family conference about the career of the youngster? By the way, where are we? We're on Bird Island now. Well, how did we get here? Well, we gassed up and drove a hundred miles over the overseas highway to Key West. We paused just long enough for a good look at a beautiful landmark. Then we flew to Fort Jefferson, Florida's newest national park. Fort Jefferson? But I thought you said it was Bird Island. That's right, Bird Island. It's over there, just beyond the battlements. See it? <laughs> we do get around, don't we? Oh, my, yes. Anything's possible in Florida. Watch how quickly we can whisk halfway up the coast to the Marine Studios, where the porpoises will play catch with you, if you like. Attendants ring an underwater dinner bell at dinner time, and the porpoises demonstrate a really first-class boarding house reach. One thing is sure, you don't have to travel far to see interesting things in Florida. Just hop in the car and travel to something new and something strange. Less than 20 minutes from these modern hotels, I could show you, of course, we go by boat part of the way. I could show you some of the most interesting. Now be quiet, shh, and just watch what goes on. This is the purple gallinule, one of Florida's friendliest birds. The lily pads are her supermarket. Lily pads make dandy stepping stones, if you have the feet for it. 
The mother is teaching her youngster that life is complex, even for gallinules. They must learn how to eat and not be eaten. Say, that's an alligator. Sure, he's out shopping for dinner too. This is a typical Everglades drama. Let's just watch it play out. I'm glad they're safe. Under mother's wing is a symbol of safety. But life in the Everglades isn't all drama. There's peace and serenity and beauty of a very special sort. For once, take the time, take plenty of time to really look at a water lily and you'll see what I mean. Epidendron orchid. A wild iris. And a swamp pink orchid. Say, that dragonfly looks like a helicopter. He can fly just like one. But butterflies, even the common false monarchs have to eat. If you take time to really look at butterflies, you'll see that their tongues are tubes to sip the nectar from the blossoms of the pickerel weed. be eaten drama is ever present. These trumpets digest insects. And the evil eye of the alligator. And the ominous bellow of the alligator. I get the idea. birds or hunters. The white ibis isn't posing for a picture. He's looking for a crayfish. The little blue heron is a hunter too. The coots are winter visitors, tourists. And so is the Sora rail. This snowy egret isn't merely admiring his reflection. He's puddling for fish to eat. The little green heron moves as stealthily as a cat as he creeps quietly up for the kill. The Seminole natives of Florida's Everglades have learned the fish spearing skill of the birds. The gaudy headdress and gay apparel of Florida's fur outdo in riotous color the plumage of the birds. During the last century, life for the Seminoles was a series of battles. 
So the women had little but scraps to sew with, but they made the best of things and evolved a gaudy patchwork style of dress. Living close to nature in Wallace homes called Chiquis, there's a natural tempo of life. Just hinted at by the wooden pestles that grind the corn. And the rhythmic flip-flop of a tortilla taking shape. It's an easy tempo that makes you think it would be kind of nice to swing and sway the Seminole way. Modern Florida swings to another tempo. A 30-ton bucket on the largest dragged line in the world. That's how Florida gets at her plentiful phosphates. Huge hoses are used to dissolve mountains of the valuable natural chemical so it can be piped to up-to-the-minute processing plants where it's purified by the most modern methods. There's nothing primitive about the phosphate industry. Florida phosphates help make Florida citrus fruits the best in the world. Did you know that in the huge modern plants like this, part of the work they do is purifying out shark's teeth and fossils and seashells? If it's seashells you want, don't go to a phosphate plant. Visit Sanibel Island. There, a family can stroll by the surf and pick up more and more interesting and actually rarer shells than most any place on Earth. Ah, yes, gastropoda and bivalves. Ah, Juno's volute. To me, it's a spotted seashell, but it sure is pretty. Like I say, Florida is all things to all people. Hermit crabs make houses out of seashells. When they outgrow one, they just crawl into another. They're practical. Florida is practical. Here, for instance, is the practical way to pick oranges. There's a glamour way to pick them too, because Florida is both glamorous and practical. But in the end, the golden health-laden fruit is harvested, packed and shipped to grace all America's breakfast tables with plenty of vitamin C. the Orange Bowl football game, a classic competition. And a festival full of dash and dazzling color. Dash and color, you haven't seen anything yet. Florida's the game fisherman's paradise. You haven't lived unless you've at least tried for a sailfish. Pardon me, but uh, who are you? I'm Ray Scott. Let's go after a sailfish. Of course, we'll take anything that shows fight. A marlin, a snook, or a snapper, or even a wahoo. The big thing is to get out on the blue water and let the clear, clear ocean air fill your lungs, wash away the city smoke, and put that sparkle in your eyes. The game fishing is a man's sport, but boy, what fun for a boy. Plenty of female deep sea nimrods get a bang out of that surging tug on the line. A fighting strike of the fabulous blue marlin. Too bad, but never mind, we're after a sailfish. He struck. Whopper. Watch it there. Locating, luring, and landing a sailfish takes some doing. So the lucky crew of a victorious craft always flies a flag that proudly.
begun to see the real Florida yet, the natural beauties of the sun setting behind palm trees. And the poinsettia, the Christmas flower. And the white-tailed deer that wraith-like wander across the hummocks of the Everglades. And the limpkins, as graceful as the name limpkin. and the anhinga, or snake birds, that swim like a snake. And have to put themselves out to dry before they can fly again. The Florida sunshine dries the wings so fast, you can see them change color. And crystal pools so bright and clear that common bluegills look like jewels. I know, I know, and the parrot jungles where any visitor can pose with a garland of friendly flower-like birds, where some of the birds look like pirates. The gorgeous, gay old rascals, like pirates, sometimes sail off on rainbow wings to raid the neighbor's fruit trees. And we haven't even visited Miami University. This campus extends far beyond the buildings. Some classes are even held underwater. What a place to go to school and study with a sea breeze rippling the pages of the textbooks. Nor have we visited the famous Bach singing tower or heard the carillon. But as I say, Miss Florida is all things to all people. young and sprightly, and she's dignified and beautiful. You have to see her and meet her in person. She'll welcome you, but even when you see her and meet her, you may not believe what you see.